Hello and welcome to the show. We start at the top of Mount Chiliad and today we're going to be doing eco-friendly cars. Well, kind of. Um, <laughs> yes, eco-friendly as in electric and hybrid cars, not eco-friendly as in avoiding hikers and stuff because they are irritating and get in the way. Uh, anyway, we start with, as I say that, yeah, go away. <laughs> I give up sometimes. Uh, we start with the Voltic. This is essentially a Tesla Roadster uh, with a bit of Lotus thrown in for good measure, although the real Tesla <laughs> is based on a Lotus as well. So yeah, basically a Tesla Roadster. Uh, this is one of the best handling cars I think I've driven in the game, uh, at least on tarmac. It's very, very good on tarmac. You almost have bikes levels of grip. Uh, when you're driving it around the cities. It's so good, in fact, that this is what I'm going to buy next in GTA Online. It really is excellent, excellent handling car. I think it's one of the fastest accelerating cars. Hasn't got the top speed of the Adder, but uh, it's an incredibly fast accelerating car. As far as off-roading goes, there are a couple of problems. While, uh, in theory, these cars should be quite heavy because they have an awful lot of batteries in them, so they shouldn't bounce around because of being exceedingly light. This does have rather low ride height. Uh, that was a very, very impressive flip I managed to do there and then promptly fluffed it up uh, a second later. Yeah, this car has very, very low ride height, and that means that when it goes over the bumps, it gets bounced around quite a lot, which makes it very, very hard to drive. As you can see there, <laughs> I've never had a problem at that particular part of the course, but uh, you just hit the bumps wrong and the car kind of gets flung around. And it gets flung around a lot more than most of the cars that we see go down here, just because of the very low bodywork and very low ride height. It doesn't help when you manage to clip a rock. Um, it is actually quite a good off-road car though. Like if well, on, on the hill climb on the way up, it was pretty good. Uh, and yeah, it is surprisingly effective. Uh, go, go, going off-road. It also doesn't help if you completely misjudge uh, where your car is and in trying to do a J-turn end up falling off the cliff. Um, yeah, that's that's not particularly useful. Now this thing is very very good off-road. I'm not sure if it's because it's supposed to be an electric car. Electric cars have an awful awful lot of torque uh, and maybe that would uh, make this car a little bit better at hill climbing and such. Okay, I'm not gonna get up there. Yeah, <laughs> there's no chance I'm gonna get up that. But it could get up some pretty stupid uh, sort of inclines. You can see over the jumps it's not the most happy thing on landing. Uh, also it doesn't help if you take a slightly wrong line and then you go tumbling off the off the cliff and you'll see that like most cars would not be able to save that. I think very very few cars would be able to save that. <laughs> Didn't realize there was a rock there which wasn't the cleverest thing but uh, yeah we're climbing a near that's a very very steep sort of bit of mountain and the car can climb it. A lot of vehicles would fail on that. Uh, however, yeah, it, while it is good off-road, it does have the low ride height and the low body work. It really does get bumped around and quite a lot to get towards the end. May have got that one a little bit wrong. We're going for a flip and a spin and there's, there's two spins. I thought I could recover it. Apparently not as we go for some more spins and roll and lost most of the bodywork. I, <laughs> I love how Michael closes the door because that's the most of his worries. Uh, then also I managed to break this car in a way I've never managed to break a car in GTA before. I just killed the entire steering. Like I bent, like you can bend wheels in and that causes problems. But uh, I've never seen it actually just completely kill the steering. I was, I was messing around. I, I could reverse and steer at very, very low speeds, but if it got up any speed, it just went straight on. Um, yeah, I'm not sure quite how that works. But uh, yeah, I managed to kill the steering <laughs> on, on a Voltic. Yeah, as I said, these cars are great fun. In single player, oh god, I can't remember where it is. I, you can find the cars in single player. Uh, fairly straightforward if you look on the internet. I also managed to run over Wolverine. Uh, he's <laughs> the dead body of the guy just kills the car. I like I I don't know how is his body stronger than the the bodywork of the car. It broke it completely. I don't know. I've hit hikers loads of times down this bit. And I've never had one do that. I'm trying to show you the damage it's done to the car. How much it's moved up the side sort of side panel, side door. Back, back quarter, that's the bit I think I'm talking about. Yeah, that's a strong body. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, everything was a problem pretty much with this car. It's a lovely car to drive when you get it right, when things are, when things are going well. Also, this is the first time I've managed to spin a car out in mid-air over there. I'm not sure, again, I have no idea what happened. I, I've, I've spun cars there before by I, oh, this, this slightly raised hill and you can run over that. 
and you can get cars up on two wheels and you can spin them when you hit that. Never spun a car just from being in midair, which was, uh, yeah, <laughs> this thing has some interesting new problems, but uh, yeah, it's a good car to drive, just not really built for off-road. This one was going a little bit better um, <laughs> up until that point, and we go tumbling off uh, down the mountain, managed to get it stopped, but uh, yeah, it didn't like the bumps particularly this car but in between the bumps it was pretty good so i was expecting a half decent time now it's not going to challenge the likes of the quad bike and the bifter but it should do fairly well for a road car the first section is always the trickiest bit on this course i think especially in this car this this opening section is very fast and very bumpy and also incredibly narrow so there's very little room for error i, I was quite cautious through there with this car uh, you could probably get it faster, but I don't think you could get it fast reliably because it's just how you land the bumps. Almost got it very wrong through there. So yeah, there are sections on here that when, when I'm looking at it back, I'm like, oh, you could probably get that faster. But the problem is, the one you might get it faster once, but you're going to make so many just little tiny errors because you are a millimeter offline, and then you're going to have a very big crash. So yeah, sometimes you've just got to be a little bit more cautious with these cars uh, when you're going down this route. Almost got it wrong there. I thought I was about to roll it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, got to be careful with sort of attacking the like the insides of the course because uh, there are some quite nasty bumps around there. I chose not to go for the jump as the landing there was screwing up. There's a number of times that uh, I had problems on that landing. So I elected not to. Don't really lose too much time by doing that. Again, that jump there, not really too much of a problem. Probably the biggest jump on the entire course. Actually, is one of the easiest to land. Almost, almost get it wrong down there. We go for a little 360, but I don't think I lost any time at all doing that. So sod it, carry on. And there we go, the Voltic has made it down the course in a pretty decent time. Yeah, I really like this car. It's a great road car. It's a fantastic road car. It's probably, it's probably taken place as my favourite road car uh, on this game. Off-road, yeah, it has, it has a few issues. Uh, but that's because it's a sports car. Look at how low the front bumper is. Yeah, the sports car off-road doesn't really work. Up next, we have the Dilettante, basically a Prius. Uh, and the gaming gods have decided it shall rain. I was wondering if we were ever going to have a, a wet downhill thing. Uh, and and we do. It would, it's so typical it would be for this car. I've also got the patrol version just because I know where these spawn. So I don't have to faff around trying to find one. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we're going to have some wet weather. Uh, driving down here. Also, this car was a nightmare getting it up the mountain. It took quite a long time getting it up to the start point. I probably should have used the cargo bomb, but uh, no, I tried to drive it. First attempt, and let's just say wet weather and sort of not that good of brakes made for a very big crash. Uh, yeah, I didn't know how much the weather affected the cars on here. I think it does affect them a fair bit. Either that or this car has utterly, utterly terrible, terrible brakes, which is possible, but I think they are better um, than this. So yeah, I was braking and it just wasn't stopping at all. And off it tumbles. And to give this car credit, it did an impressive job of not blowing up. I've thrown many cars off this mountain. Uh, and this one I did not want to blow up as we go for a further tumble. Like, I lose all of the body panels completely, I think, on one of these. Maybe no, it's not this one. Uh, but it does not it does not blow up, which is uh, quite impressive. So, yeah, the weather was a little bit of a problem. On the one time I got past the first, first, <laughs> first corner early on, and then I managed to have problems further down because just don't have any grip. There was a lack of steering, there was a lack of braking, and this isn't the best handling car in the world to start with. As we go off down the mountain backwards, this is normally a recipe for explosions. And again, Mike was closing the door. Uh, apparently not. Apparently the, uh, was it dilettante, is it impervious to explosions as it rolls around on his roof. Um, yeah, like I've, I've had loads of cars get chucked off here, go down backwards and touch the ground, and then they instantly explode. Whereas this thing just... <laughs> It just doesn't care. It just bounces off, and I think we've lost pretty much all the body panels now, except for the bonnet. Uh, the first quarter was really very, very tricky around here. It's ooh, I've, <laughs> the rock again. You can't take you can't take any sort of leeway over that rock because it will screw you up on the landing. Tried to save it, and ended up driving into a, into another rock further down. Yeah, the first quarter is very challenging because it is downhill. It is very fast, and with all the weather, I'm pretty sure I just jumped over a cougar there. With with all the rain and the not amazing brakes to start with. It was proving quite a challenge. 
this car isn't terrible to drive. I've had worse trying to drive down off-road again. No, we're not going to get stopped. We're going to go soaring over the jump. That's not going to end particularly well. And off we go. <laughs> Lots of spins down here. I was trying to sort of stop it. You, once it starts going at this sort of speed, there is nothing you can do until it hits something. I was thinking this time, finally, we're going to explode. No, we're not. It's <laughs> That's a pretty damn hefty crash. And the Prius, the, whatever the thing is called, has has not exploded. God damn it. Uh, anyway, it was the next attempt, I believe, that I actually got a clean run. Which was amazing, considering I'd spent so much time at this sort of first section. Because I was having to be so cautious down here. This was so, so treacherous, uh, trying to get that right. And again, down here, because you've got all of these fairly fast sort of jumps. It's when, when you land and it's in the wet. The car likes to skid around. Also, this is a road car after all. So, yeah, this opening section was very, very tough to get right. So you can see I almost outbreak myself there. And that was me being fairly cautious um, on the brakes. Things go a little bit wrong there. I manage somehow to get away with that. Normally, if you do that, you end up just sliding down the mountain and you can't save it. I got very, very lucky there. Yeah, I, you could argue it's a little bit cheaty, but sod it, it's in the rain. I've probably lost far more time uh, being cautious because of the rain than I would have gained from that little bit. Again, like I think when I got to this point, I hadn't driven this part of the track because I'd had so many problems with the opening bit, so I didn't quite know <laughs> what I was That's doing. It was a case of just be a little bit more cautious than you would normally and hope that the car will stay on the road. And to be fair, it did, it, considering everything was thrown at it, it was doing a pretty good job. Uh, of course, this isn't the fastest car in the game. In fact, I think, if I remember reading correctly somewhere, this is one of the slowest cars you can get in GTA. Like, slowest normal road cars, you know, excluding some of the silly vehicles. Um, so, yeah, it's not going to set the quickest of times, even if it was in the dry. But it was doing a fairly good job. It wasn't having as many problems with these bumps as you were having uh, in the Voltic just because it's got a little higher ride height, uh, a little bit better suited for this kind of thing. And around the final corner, got very nearly, <laughs> nearly fell off the edge, managed to save it, and there we go. The Prius has <laughs> made it down the mountain. Yeah, it did a good job. I mean, considering everything we're throwing at it, <laughs> it made it to the bottom without any any major catastrophes. Now, the car hadn't blown up, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that you guys would probably like to see that. So we'll get a fuel can, and we'll put some petrol uh, around the car. You've got to make sure that uh, <laughs> it was set on fire properly, because uh, I was expecting this car to explode many times. It's well known for being a very weak car as well. But uh, no, it didn't want to do that, so when we were throwing it off the mountain. To be fair, this thing survived pretty damn well when I did the hybrid off-roading challenge. So, we're going to have to get rid of it, um, and it should have a fiery death. Probably wasn't the cleverest thing getting out of the car in the middle of the storm, but never mind, we shall have a roasted Prius, I think. That's very Christmassy, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> there we go, Prius explosion, and... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure everybody would have wanted me to do that. So I go over to investigate the car, and the car has the final laugh, pretty much. I may have got a little bit too close, and it set me on fire. Well, the, yet again, we have been beaten by, by a blooming Prius or equivalent. So for the final vehicle, I was going to use the Surge. I can't remember what manufacturer it is. Uh, yeah, I was planning on using the Surge. I could not find a blooming thing anywhere. I ended up swapping characters and was messing around trying to find the damn car. Couldn't find it. So instead, I'm going to use a mountain bike. Uh, since this is, again, this is an eco-friendly thing, technically. Um... <laughs> Thought I'd give it a go, as well, I, was, I was messing around with something else, and I just happened to see a mountain bike at the bottom of the mountain, and thought, sod it, we may as well use this. So, yeah, why not? Now, the downsides to this is that it doesn't have an engine. I also love how you're on a bike and you run over a cougar. I'm pretty sure if you hit a cougar on a mountain bike, it would hurt the blueing cougar, but I think you'd probably fall off your bike as well. Um... But yeah, as far as disadvantages to this thing go, of course, it hasn't got an engine, it's all pedal power. Yes, this course is downhill, but a car with an engine is still going to be a hell of a lot faster than you riding a bike. The plus sides are, though, this thing, I think I braked a couple of times, maybe for the hairpin, but on the most part, you don't have to worry about getting slowed down for quarters, because you can just turn and you will have grip. The mountain bikes, much like the motorbikes on here, have stupid amounts of grip, and it can actually be a little bit of a problem for some of these, because they have got just too much grip, they are too twitchy, they're too, yeah, they're, they're too easy to turn, that actually causes problems. 
uh, for them, you end up overcorrecting and all of that kind of thing. So yeah, the the mountain bike had that to an extent. The the advantage, if you like, of the mountain bike over the motorbikes is because the mountain bike is slower. This isn't as bigger a problem. It doesn't cause as many issues uh, as it did with the with the motorbikes, just because you're simply going slower. So yeah, mountain bike was very easy to <laughs> to get down this course. Uh, there was much frantic pressing of a button, but it made it all the way to the bottom of the mountain on its first a try, first a try, first attempt or try. Either word would have done would have done in that situation. I tried to use both at once. Um, yeah, it made it down the mountain very easy to get down there. Took quite a while getting up to the top. Again, much frantic pressing of a button, but there we go. So that is it for the eco-friendly vehicles. Um, as far as the time goes, the Voltic goes into fifth with a pretty damn impressive time of 127. 0.36, slightly faster than a Kalahari. Yes, the Kalahari is much easier to drive off-road than the Voltic, but the Voltic is very good uh, on the road. Uh, yeah, it has a little problem with bouncing around, but it's an incredibly fast accelerating car, which makes up uh, for part of the times you have to be cautious uh, with some of the corners. As far as the Prius, uh, that goes down into 14th uh, with a 144.7, while the mountain bike amazingly <laughs> beats the Prius. That's Well, to be fair, the Prius will have a little wet symbol because it's the only one that's gone down here in the wet, and that is a bit of a disadvantage. Um, again, mountain bike, yeah, pretty, pretty good time, not quite as fast as a limo, four seconds off off that of a limo, but considering that's just pedal and gravity powered, yeah, that does pretty damn well. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys, so thank you very much for watching. This weekend there was other stuff planned, I've, I've had so many blue and technical problems and things are broken, I just haven't had the time to get them sorted. There will be a Gran Turismo Rally thing coming soon, and there will be a Gran Turismo Will It Roll. I just haven't had time. Well, I recorded the rally thing and the recording broke, and I really haven't had time to do a Will It Roll because Will It Roll is very time-consuming. Uh, so again, next week, some point, maybe, maybe as a Christmassy, specially thing, maybe we'll have a Will It Roll. I don't know quite how things are working. Um, but yeah, I will try. <laughs> I'm trying my best to sort my blooming computer out. It's actually the computer. It's the blooming capture card and Audacity that are having problems. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that stuff is coming. Be patient. It will be here at some point. However, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching. If you have suggestions for cars or for kind of categories of cars you would like to see me do on Downhill Chaos, please do leave them in the comments section. I'll have a look through and the most popular or my favourites will be in a video at some point. However, until next time, goodbye.